Hey, what is going on everybody? My name is Roddy and you're watching my channel, Roddy the Brand. If you're new here, welcome. I do website design and development videos just like this. Today we're going to explore the Chalk NPM package, which essentially can help us emphasize terminal output or just make our terminal look better. It's very easy to get started. And if this is something that you are interested in learning, stick around. And before we begin, if you find this video useful, consider liking this video, uh, subscribing to my channel for more content like this. And now, and also if you have any questions, please comment below. And now let's jump on the computer and get started. Hello and welcome everybody. Let's get started by creating a brand new Hello World app. And if you are new to Node.js, I'm going to be doing everything step by step, but feel free to skip to the next section if you're already familiar with Node.js and you know how to initialize a new project. So first of all, I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop, right click new folder. And I'm just going to call this one chalk and then maybe dash node.js. And then this is going to be our project folder. So enter the folder and let's initialize a new project in here. To do this, I'm on Windows, so I can do left shift, right click, open PowerShell window here. But if you're Mac or Linux, you're just gonna have to CD to your project folder and do the following command. So to initialize a new project, we have to do npm init, and it's going to basically initialize a new project. Uh, you can give your project a package name, a version, description, and so on, but I'm just going to save a little bit of time by pressing enter. And this is going to initialize the project for us. As you can see, we have this package.json file in here. Now we need to open our project folder in our favorite uh, code editor. And for me, this is Visual Studio Code. So I can do code dot. And as you can see, this opens Visual Studio Code for me. But if that doesn't work for you, you can simply open Visual Studio Code, go to file, and then just open folder. That should be absolutely Fine. Or if you're using another code editor, that's also fine. Just open, uh, go to file, open folder and continue from here. As you can see, what I have is my project folder in here and that's it. Let's open the package.json file and have a look quickly. Everything seems to be looking good. Very simple package.json file. And now we need to add the dependencies that we need for this project. So obviously today we're going to be exploring Chalk and we need to install this first. So let's go back to the PowerShell or actually we can use the terminal inside here as well. If you wish, let's do that because I feel like the terminal actually shows some of the features a little bit better. So there will be a little bit of a difference between uh, the terminal PowerShell and the terminal inside here, the way Chalk is displaying things. I, I believe that this one here is probably kind of the nicest, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right. If we open a new terminal, and as I said, feel free to use whatever you have available. Uh, even command line will be probably fine. Let's open the terminal here. And all I need to do is install chalk. To do this, I can do npm install and then chalk like so and press enter. This is going to take a second. And as you can see in my package.json file, we have now the dependency chalk, which is 4.1 one as of recording this video. Obviously, if you're watching this in the future, the version might be a little bit different, I guess. The next thing that I want to do is install Nodemon. And the reason for this is just because I want every time I make a change on my document, the project to restart just to save us a little bit of time. So Nodemon is a development package and we have to do npm. You can put install as i for short, and then you can do Nodemon and then dash dash save dash dev and this will install normal for us uh, within a few seconds as you can see this added dev dependency normal in here and if you want our project to be using normal what we have to do is inside package.json we have to go under scripts and just add another line here so comma and then we do start we want our project to start with normal so that's why we're doing this and we can do Nodemon, and we want to specify the file that we want to start, which we haven't yet created, but this is going to be app.js, and we can now save this. If we save this, we now need to create this app.js file, and we can create our first Hello World app. So inside here, inside our folder, let's create a new file, call it app.js, and we can start writing our Hello World app. 
First of all, we need to require the chalk npm package. To do this, uh, we can simply do a const. We can give it a name of chalk, and then we can do equals require, and then we can require chalk like so. And now we can just start using chalk by uh, grabbing this name from here and literally displaying like hello world. Let me show you. Let's do a very simple console log hello world. So let's do console.log. And for example, if you wanted to console hello world in blue, what we'll have to do, let's do hello world like so. And if we save this, nothing is happening. And this is because we haven't run our project yet. So all we have to do is inside the terminal, we can do npm start and this should start our application. As you can see, we're getting a few things in yellow and green, which means that our project is started. Uh, we're getting hello world, which is what we want. Now, if you want to make this hello world a colorful, a little bit more colorful with chalk, we can simply inside here, we can bring the chalk constant. So we can do chalk dot blue, for example, and then we can wrap the hello world in brackets like so and save. As you can see, the color has changed. It's supposed to be blue, but for some reason it's very purple on mine. But let's change it to maybe red, like so. Save it. And as you can see, hello world is now red. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more. Okay, this isn't too bad. So you can see a little bit better. But as you can see, this is how you change the color. I've actually started writing a blog post on this. So let me show you super quickly some of the options. So if I bring my browser, you will see that. Uh, by the way, if you go to the blog post after the video, you will see the all the links will be available here to, to the NPM package and so on. And then if we go down, now these are the color methods that we can use. We can use uh, all of them here. We have black, red, green, yellow, blue, magenta, C and white, and so on. So this can be all used. And I've given you a few examples here. So we might as well just copy this and I'll show you quickly. So if you go back to Visual Studio Code, let me paste some of this. So we have chalk.red, blue, green, magenta, and obviously we can add a lot more. So if I save this, you see that we have red, blue, green, and magenta in here looking really nice. In PowerShell, they might not look exactly the same, but they do work. I think that they do work in PowerShell. Uh, some of the text styling doesn't seem to work properly in PowerShell, but uh, I'll get to that in a second. This is how you do the text color. But if you want to actually add a background to them, we can do something different. We can actually add BG as background in front of those colors. So for example, inside here, I have another example. These are the background methods. So we have BG as background and then black, red, green, and so on. And I have a few examples on here. Let me copy this super quickly. So basically all you have to do is add uh, BG and then camel case uh, B for black, uh, R for red and so on. That's how it goes. And then if I save this super quickly, you will see that this kind of like highlights the text, which is pretty cool. I mean, some of it, it's super hard to see, like the yellow, the green, uh, it's very hard to see. But as you can see, this is how you do it. Again, you use the child constant from here, and then you just put the method, which is BG black, BG red, and so on. Super easy to do. Let me see what else do we have. We have some of the uh, text modifiers, which is like uh, italic, bold, underline, and so on. Let me, let me show you a few quick examples. So I'm going to remove this and write a few examples. So we can literally do chalk and then dot, for example, let's do bold. And then instead of here, we can do bold. Let me do, let me do a few more. So let's do bold, let's do dim. Like so, dim, let's copy another line. And by the way, I'm duplicating the line with Alt, Shift and down arrow. And let's do another famous one, which is italic. And I can copy this and paste it. Let's do one more, let's do underline as it's kind of like quite popular. So let's do that, save this, and let's see what we get. As you can see, we get bold text, dim, italic, and an underlined text, which is pretty cool. So this is how you use the 
text modifiers and also you can use uh, hex colors so for example let me show you a very quick example for how you can use hex so for hex it's going to be you probably guessed it chuck dot hex like so and then you can put the color of the hex value you can put a hex value which is a color that you want to use so that's usually with the hashtag and then we can do let's do something like uh, zero uh, and then bb5 ff and then you can just put your word in here so this will be polistro blue uh, if i save this you will see that we're getting polistro blue in this nice blue color and this is how you use the hex uh, you can do exactly the same thing with rgb so we can do rgb instead and obviously we need to put the rgb value in here but without the quotes and let's do something like zero comma one nine one two five five oops i didn't put zero okay zero and then this is going to be a blue color so we can do i am blue da d da die okay so if i save this i'm blue double d double die it's um here it's pretty cool so this is how you use RGB. You can also make custom styles. So for example, you might want to put like a variable name of custom style. And this can be equal shark dot, uh, I don't know, let's say bold dot red. That would work quite well. And then we can use the custom style now and do put in here, console log custom style. And now we can put custom bold red save this and as you can see this is custom bold red which is pretty cool so that's how you define custom styles and that's pretty much it for more you can always go and explore the official npm package the link will be in the description below and that's pretty much everything from this tutorial i hope you enjoyed it i hope that you learned something new for more videos just like this consider subscribing to my channel my name is Raddy and you're watching my channel right the brand and i will see you in the next one thank you very much for watching and see you next time